Hi guys, this is Dazul Almeida back for Visual Real Estate Developers. Today we're going to be talking about and continuing our channel of what is CRZ, that is Coastal Regulation Zone pertaining to Goa. Today we're basically going to be giving you all a walkthrough of the various classifications under CRZ and further we'll be going into a much more detailed version of it of what is permissible and what is not permissible and how to work around with the CRZ respect with, with the respective type of CRZ property that you may be dealing with or plan on dealing in. So without much delay, let's begin today's video. Now, CRZ in its basic form has been classified into four separate categories. Under this, uh, the CRZ regulation notification pretty much try to cover up all the types of uh, zones that would come under the coastal region of uh, India. Here, however, we are specifically talking about Goa, so I'll try to give you all some examples here and there so that even you all get a better understanding. So, without much delay, let's have a much better understanding of these four respective classifications. And I will be making a couple of videos after this uh, to going much more detail into the version that is what you can exactly do and what you can't and what is permissible and what is not in these respective properties. So let's begin with uh, the first classification which is CRZ1. Now CRZ1 has been classified, has been subclassified into CRZ1A and CRZ1B. Now CRZ1A basically refers uh, uh, basically covers all the ecologically sensitive areas which are integral to sustain the basis of the coastal belt. So whatever is very important in order to sustain the very basic meaning or the very basic nature of a coastal belt will come under CRZ1A. Now what would this include? Basically overall it will include mangroves, corals, sand dunes, uh, turtle nesting grounds or any form of similar breeding grounds that uh, would be highly integral for me for the coastal bed to maintain its very basic nature and uh, there are much much more multiple such areas that would come under crz one m but these are the more important and uh, likely to come across ones the second one the second subclassification of crz one is crz one b now it's simple uh, to get the very basic meaning of crz one b this basically includes uh, your areas between your low tide and high tide so this is basically much more used for uh, not being, uh, of course, these are not the areas that will be permitted for any form of private construction, only form of uh, activities that you, that would be feasible or possible in these respective regions would be your uh, infrastructural development like any ports uh, or pipelines or some, car, some kind of activities uh, that was, that is not actually private but more based on infrastructural development. <coughs> The second one, CRZ2. CRZ2 basically comprises of all the zones and sectors that have been already developed close to or just up to the shoreline. Now, what do we mean by develop? By develop, we mean that they have been developed within the respective municipal uh, limits and are in a respective designated urban, uh, uh, urban sector or an urban, uh, urban region, which are already substantially built up with an approach road and other basic infrastructural facilities like uh, sewage, or uh, drainage, water supply, etc. Now CRZ3. Basically this refers to the land undisturbed and those that do not come under CRZ2 will mostly be classified under CRZ3. You will find mostly that land uh, in uh, rural areas will be found in this respective uh, classification. However, CRZ, uh, however, certain urban areas where the built up uh, where the built up is not that substantially high, we may also come under the respective uh, classification. Now, CRZ three is further classified into because of this respective uh, model of rural and urban is classified into CRZ three A and CRZ three B. Now, in CRZ three A, it basically says that whether population is the whether population density is high. Which is which means that it has to be more than two one six one per square meter. Then these areas shall be classified as uh, CRZ three A. Now here in this case, if the property is CRZ three A, you will have a uh, no development zone from the high tide. That is, you will have a no develop. You will have a fifty meters no development zone. That is NDZ. Uh, of no development zone that is you cannot do any form of developmental activity permanent or temporary 
no development activity is uh, allowed in this respective zone that is of 50 meters from the respective high tide line uh, established by the respective authority now the same also has to be verified by the coastal zone management authority that is CZMA they will basically verify whether the respective region comes under the respective classification as well as whether you are uh, legit, legitimate or whether you are uh, able to apply for a respective uh, permit under the respective uh, CRZ classification. Now CRZ 3G basically says that this is basically an uh, opposite version that is this applies for uh, with a population density is not high. So in this case the population density wherever the region which has a population density of under 2161 per square meter uh, in this case the no development zone will be 200 meters from the high tide line. Uh, now how do you know whether you are in a respective highly densely populated area or a non highly densely populated area? Now, how do you verify this basic information is that the regional plan and the respective authority will disclose you the respective information that is the classification of your respective property and this will be mostly uh, carried out by the CZMA that is the Coastal Zone Management Authority who governs the entire form any form of department or any form of development activities that take place in CRZ zones. And finally coming to CRZ4. Now CRZ4 will not really affect a huge mass of the viewers or the population. This is more referring to the water areas. Uh, even CRZ4 is subclassified into CRZ A and CRZ, sorry, CRZ4 A and CRZ4 B. Uh, it mainly applies uh, to water areas uh, and in specific uh, more of inland water areas relating to islands. So, we will be going much more in the detail just for the purpose of understanding this respective uh, classification. Now, I give you a basic understanding of the main, uh, overall understanding so that you'll understand what the basic classifications are and which one you need to be taking interest in as per your case may be. Uh, <clears throat> I will be going into a much uh, detailed uh, look in each of these videos. At the same time, I will be attaching uh, links to a couple of files which will give you all a much wider view of uh, the intricate details of how CRZ functions in uh, India and uh, this is meant to meant to educate you all so that you all know exactly what you all are getting into before you purchase a respective uh, property that may be coming or, or is coming under the, uh, under the CRZ uh, under the CRZ regulations. <clears throat> now, this is also important so that you know what to look for the terminologies uh, that you need to know before you invest in a property Otherwise, a lot of the times, many times situations have arise in our case as well where people have invested in properties and they purchase properties whose classification does not uh, allow them to develop or even touch the property in any possible manner. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> I will be following up with a much detailed uh, look into all of these classification, trying to give you more and more uh, knowledge about how, what the CRZ is and how it makes a difference uh, in uh, the coastal development uh, line. Thank you so much. I look forward uh, for uh, uh, to providing your many more videos regarding CRZ and other uh, topics regarding real estate in uh, Goa. Please like, share and subscribe uh, our channel and uh, this content uh, to whoever it may be useful for. Thank you so much again. This is Desval Almeida for Visual Real Estate Developers.